If you're new to the channel and you like what you see, well welcome to Life of Gaz. Now I try my best to upload a new video every single Wednesday and if you want to keep up to date with that make sure you hit the subscribe button and more importantly ring the bell to get all the notifications. Well welcome back to Life of Gaz guys, I'm out here today fishing at Stanley Park Lake. The sun's just starting to come up over the horizon, the cars are just starting to meet the roads and I'm down here in pursuit of pike. So fingers crossed, we're gonna see some today. So first of all, before I set my rods up and cast out, I like to make sure I've got everything ready. So I'm setting out a two rod buzz bar and also my landing net, just in case I sneak in an early fish. Now today I'm pike fishing and being the fact that I'm out pike fishing I like to keep this quite simple. I've got two two and a half, uh, two and three quarter pound test curve uh, rods, I've got two bait runners and all I'm going to do is fish a wire trace at the end of a running leisure. Now when I fish in this method I find it's quite productive and I always like to try and keep things simple. And as for baits today, I'm fishing a range of fish baits. Now obviously pike being predatory fish, fish is obviously a good thing to use. So I've got some sprats, I've got a roach, I've got a herring, and I've also got a mackerel. And some of these are going to be cut into sections, some of them are going to be fished whole. And what I'm going to do is just have a go and see what works. I've never fished this venue before, so it'll be interesting to see what the flavours these fish seem to appreciate are. And for those of you watching my channel, and obviously my channel is mainly sort of based on sea fishing, uh, generally what I'm going to do is go through how I rig up and how I bait up. So when it comes to baiting up, uh, I always try and make sure that the head is down at the bottom hook, the second hook is up towards the tail end of the fish, and this means that when the pike grabs it, it should try and swallow it head first. When it does that, it means that the hooks pull back against the mouth. And that's the theory I've always used fishing, and it always seems to work for me. Now I let this first cast soak for around about an hour and if you watch the water surface on this still water especially when it's sped up to the speed which I've sped it up you can actually see the movements which run around and if you watch the bubbles you can see them sort of moving backwards and forwards stopping for a minute and for me it's just interesting to watch because this is some up you generally miss. Now you bear in mind as well that there was no wind in this first hour, the wind picked up a little bit later on in the session but there is no wind now so it's interesting to watch that water moving around. Now the first hour was absolutely biteless, there was nothing going on one bit so what I do is I tend to work off of the principles if I don't get anything in that first uh, in the first sort of time period then change one thing each time so throughout the first hour of this I just stayed static then the next hour I changed baits changed positions changed distances I was casting tried to cast towards other structures and this obviously means that you're covering more area now having said that I did try this multiple times and there wasn't really a lot that was working over on this side of the island for the first part of this fishing trip. Now some of you also may notice that I do, especially when I'm predator fishing, is that I'll bring the bait in actually quite slowly and I'll keep that just sort of ticking over across the bottom when I do. And the reason is, is being predatory tree fish, sometimes a little bit of movement can spark a fish which is watching your bait into a take. Unfortunately, that didn't work here.
Now, throughout the morning, without much happening on the road, to give me a chance to have a look at some of the urban wildlife which we've got around here in Stanley Park. And there's quite a few ducks here. Um, for instance, I was watching the tufted ducks diving for their food, and then over the top of my rods, I got a couple of mallards fly in as well. But the most interesting one was a great crested grebe which was fishing because I've spoke to fishermen as I've been walking through the park and they say there's nothing in the way of small fish. There's a lot of pike in here and there's about 80 carp in here. But this great crested grebe answered the question of what the pike are actually feeding on because this little bird managed to catch hold of a silver fish of some description. Now I'm not 100% sure whether it's a silver bream or whether it's a roach but what I am sure of is this great crested grebe was catching more than me at this point. And there he is, enjoying that breakfast for him just there. Now, to be fair, this fish looked quite ambitious and I was wondering whether this bird would be able to swallow this fish in one go. It took him about 40 seconds, but he got there in the end. Now, if you guys did want to pin me down to what I think that fish is, then I'd have gone with a roach over the top of a silver bream but, like I said, I'm no expert on these fish. Now when it comes to fishing for pike, this is the first time I've done it in over 20 years. So, uh, when I picked up my rod and felt a bit of weight there, it meant this is the first time this rod or reel has had any weight on it to actually pull against. Now I knew this wasn't a fish, I just thought that I'd hooked up on the bottom. But in fact, actually what I'd hooked up on was someone else's gear, someone out, uh, someone out carp fishing. Now why I know it was someone out carp fishing was because it was a... Um, it was a hair rig, it had a couple of free weights on it so I was happy for that and also um, it had the boilers on as well but in the interest of keeping any water body nice fit and healthy what I'd done was I managed to pull all the line in, wrap it up, take that, chuck it in the bin and I got a couple of weights uh, for my trouble as well. Now over the six hours I'd sat over on this side of the island which to me looked quite promising first thing in the morning was absolutely biteless. I'd tried changing bait sizes, I'd tried changing bait types, I'd cast to various areas of this lake, I'd look for open ground, I'd look for cover, I'd look for sort of snaggy areas, anywhere as I thought that pike may want to hide out. And throughout these six hours I felt fairly confident that I'd covered most of this ground without really coming into any success. So the last ditch attempt, what I'd try and do, change a little bit at a time. This one was a drastic change because it meant moving sides of the island over to the other channel by the other bridge. And with the first rod, I cast over towards the opposite bank where there was a fallen tree and I cast just short of that. Now I've not really cast with these rods, like I said, I've never fished with this gear before. So I was quite impressed the fact that I didn't overcast and end up in the snag. I left it just short and that was perfect for me. The second rod, I plopped that one out at around about sort of 30 yards, just out into the middle of this area of the lake. And there's a quick view of my complete fishing setup. I sort of work on the principle of if I can't carry it, then I don't really need it. So I try and fish as light as I can, which gives me great opportunities to move swims should I ever need to.
And after over six hours of no action at all on the other side, 15 minutes in, I got a slow, methodical and purposeful run, which I struck into and felt my first fish of the day. And making his way to the net was the first pike I've caught in over 20 years. First time I fished for him in that time as well, but it's still really nice to get uh, reacquainted with this species that I've gone looking for in the past. Now it was only small, but I love getting pictures of predatory fish, and that's exactly what I did here. Got one for the album. And after having a few minutes to recover in the net, I felt confident that this fish was looking good to go back. Um, I love putting pike back because they seem to me look like alligators as they go down to sit on the bottom before they take their time to swim off, especially in this cool water. And not long after putting that first pike back, then my other rod decided to give me a nice run as well but that's a story for next week so to be continued I hope you guys have enjoyed this video well guys that's the first half of my bike fishing video over now this was going to be one video but due to the fact that we've got the coronavirus and we're now on lockdown I've decided to split this video in half and try and give myself a bit more content for any of my subscribers to be able to watch. So if you have enjoyed this video and especially if you want to see the second part of it, make sure you hit the subscribe button down here, check out my last fishing video over here and my fishing playlist up top.